Welcome to a new video in my home automation series and um, just a couple of minutes ago I finished recording this uh, review of this new uh, PIR motion sensor from Sonoff and as I said in the beginning of that video I received three products so I think it's time to look at the next one which is going to be this uh, Zigbee door and window sensor. So I'm going to just uh, move stuff around. I'm going to open this up. I haven't opened this yet and uh, Let's see what we get in the box. So we get a small documentation and we got the device. And, oh, oh, this looks funky. Okay, ah, oh, it's a, I like this shape. Okay, so this is the new window and door sensor. Oops, so you get the main unit and then you get the, the well, this is basically just a magnet. And in order to compare this to the previous model, so this is the previous model, actually, let me just do it like this. So this is the new window, oh, okay, well, it's too bright. So this is the new window and door sensor, and that's the old one. And um, yeah, I mean, it got a little bit uh, bigger, as in fatter, and then the size is pretty much the same, a few millimeters wider and higher than the previous one but then the, the magnet part is a really small one. So I think this is really just a magnet, nothing else. I mean, even the previous one, I have opened this up and there is just a magnet inside. So if you think that this is still too big, you can just replace it with any magnet. Just, you know, test the one which is probably uh, strong enough so it triggers from a couple of millimeters. But uh, yeah, you get some double-sided tape on one side. This has some double-sided tape as well and it looks like it has a button so it can detect when it gets removed from the window. Maybe there is a trip functionality. And yeah, so SNZB04 and this one, oh, this one uses the same CR27, sorry, 2377 cell. So this is a really fat, big, a coin cell and actually it is the same one which is used here and um, I'm glad that you know if I have to stock a new type of battery at least it's the same type of battery for both of the uh, the units and we have a button on the top and that's it so let's look at the documentation I don't expect a lot and uh, based on the previous one one side should be just uh, you know download the user manual, FCC warning and that sort of stuff. And the second side is a very brief user documentation, which is pretty much like, you know, follow the on-screen instructions and scan the QR code. So you would scan the QR code if you want to add it to within the evening application. But I think what I'm going to do is uh, I'm just going to add it to my NS Panel Pro. So most probably I can see a tab here. So I think I need to remove this tab first. Yep, I'm not seeing any LEDs or anything. So let me start the pairing process. So add device and start pairing. And there is a button, so I think I'm just going to long press it. Uh, and we just wait. Okay, so maybe there was an extra sort of 10 seconds that I edited out and I also placed the sensor on the uh, on the surface and I pushed it a little bit down to push this button. I don't know whether that makes a difference or you just really need to push the stop button for a couple of seconds or uh, well not a couple but 10 seconds to get this up and now we can see that we have oh sorry you can't see but now we have a window and the door sensor and it's opened and now it is closed. And now it's opened and now it's closed so yeah it is definitely working and that's it i don't think that it would do a lot more but let me start the recording on my phone and then go back to the evlink app so um, i'm back on the main screen and i can already see the snzp04p device and it says it's closed. So again, the, uh, the UI looks exactly the same as the old sensor, which I'm hoping that I can find here. Uh, obviously that you can see it here, but uh, I haven't really used this for a long time and I'm 
wondering if the battery still works on this because I think probably it is offline somewhere which means that the battery have died at some point. But again, I think that the, uh, the UI was very, very similar. So it basically just shows the status that it's, uh, oh, this magnet is really strong. Um, so now it is open or it's going to be open very soon. Oh yeah, it's open. It just took a little bit more time and now it's closed. And you get a history of thing opening or closing. That was exactly the same. And um, you get a battery status and that's pretty much it. So let's go into the settings. So let's see what it does. So we have a name and we have a version. We can assign to a room. You can do push notification and that's it. So I think uh, there is not an awful lot more here than uh, these functionality. So I wonder if, you know, how this um, button on the at the back actually makes any difference to the unit. I don't want to take it apart because it, yeah, I think I can just open this one if I have a screwdriver, but I won't be able to get to the top. Because even if I have um, sort of this in the air, it still shows that it's closed or open. And if I push it down, sort of simulate that it's actually firmly attached to a window or a door, then, you know, it still works the same way. Opened, closed, opened, closed. So maybe this is going to be a software update or maybe not, or maybe it, that sort of small button has no significance at all. But anyway, I just thought that I'm going to point out because there is definitely something there. And uh, yeah, but to be honest, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, I don't expect an awful lot else from a door sensor. It works fine. I'm pretty sure that with this bigger battery, it's going to last even longer. And if I go into the scenes again, I can just probably create a trigger on the smart device. So um, I can create a trigger for if the device is opened or closed. So when it detects this magnet moving in or out, but then I can also, ah, okay, you can see it removed. So let's not run ahead of ourselves. So you can create a separate one which says remain closed for a duration and you can set the duration and remains open for a duration. And actually this is nice. I like this one because uh, it's, uh, I mean, it just makes scenes easier. You could do, even without this, you can do, you can get to the same functionality with some, you know, two uh, scenes and with a delay node and enabling scenes and that sort of stuff. But having this integrated into the trigger is, it, it just makes it so much easier. And actually, let me just uh, see if I can get my other sensor. I might have moved it um, across one of my other, I mean, uh, this is the D, DW2, this is the old Wi-Fi version, but I had the other um, Zigbee version, but it looks like I've probably replaced that unit and I moved it either to the iHost or something else. But I don't think that it was available. So this remains closed for a duration and remains open for a duration. That's something new for this device. And of course, we, you have this uh, new option here, which is to remove. So actually, it does make a difference. So it's still going to send you events when it's uh, opened or closed, regardless if it's on the, on the door or if it's removed. But again, you can just create an additional notification for yourself if the unit is getting removed. Maybe accidentally it gets bumped and it falls off, or I don't know, maybe this uh, double-sided tape gets wet and then it just falls off from the door or the window, but at least you can now create an automation. Maybe just set up a notification for yourself that, hey, just, you know, please check because uh, your sensor is no longer on the door or on the window. But other than that, I quite like it. I think even with these two options here, the remains closed for a duration, remains open for a duration, it's a great stuff. It's um, it, it it is a good addition, and it just makes setting up a you know a custom scene so much easier. So this is definitely welcome in my books. So that that's great. And of course, you know you set up that I want to do something if the door sorry the if the yeah let's say the door or the window remains open for more than ten minutes, 
And then on the trigger side, you can do something. You can send a push notification like, you know, please don't forget to close the door. And of course, you can combine this, uh, you know, condition with other, with other things. So if I just select open and I add a new condition, let's say a, um, a day of the uh, time of the day, let's say, you know, eight o'clock. And I can create um, a scene which uh, is going to do something if it if at eight o'clock the window is still open. So maybe I can send myself a notification that you know please close the doors or close the uh, close the windows. Maybe you it, it is an office or um, yeah maybe it's an office and then you leave the office at eight o'clock. You close everything up and then this is an easy way to check if anything is open. Yeah, the the phone is going to send you a notification immediately. So yeah, it's great. Okay, um, definitely um, something that uh, worth buying this one. So as I said. The big battery is most probably going to mean be bigger battery life. The removed option gives extra security in case, uh, well, somebody nicks the sensor or just, you know, it happens to uh, fall off from the, um, from the door on the window. And this extra events on uh, open or close for a duration, again, it just makes setting up the scenes, you know, a lot more customizable and, and the, the way it triggers uh, could be you know, a lot more specific to your requirements. Just as I said for the previous model, the motion sensor, so this is a new product which is coming out or getting released on the 20th of December. So once that happens, I would be able to, you know, come back and update the video description and put a purchasing links there. So if you are interested in this product, you would be able to find that past 20th of December. But I think that will be all for today. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you next video.